and welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm Anissa Martinez. And I'm Carl Cook. March is Women's History Month at Fresno State. In honor of this day, we recognize and give thanks to two women who encourage, support, and guide us in the broadcast news industry, Kim Stevens and Faith Sidlow. Alexis Molina has the story. For years, Kim Stevens and Faith Sidlow have been part of Fresno State's MCJ department passing down their knowledge of the industry to their students. But before becoming professors, these women had great broadcast careers. Good evening. She even started her career in Bakersfield, where she anchored and reported for KERO. She worked her way up the ranks and eventually found her final home as a co-host for Great Day on KMPH. Stevens won numerous awards and recognitions for her work. The city of Fresno even made December 18th Kim Stevens Day. Steven started teaching aspiring journalists at Fresno State in 2015. Kim is a huge influence on me. Uh, her classes I took for MCJ last semester really wanted me to just get into it and learn a lot more than I ever knew that I had to know for being an MCJ in communications. So well in this particular... Sidlow worked as a reporter, anchor, and producer for the Fresno NBC affiliate for 28 years. She made a name for herself in the industry and is a well-known, award-winning broadcast journalist. Sidlow became a part of Fresno State's MCJ family in 2009, touching the hearts and minds of every student she taught. I joke with her all the time saying that... Uh, um, my degree should have her name next to it too because the whole reason why I'm a Fresno State Bulldog is because of Faith Sidlow. Both of these women go above and beyond what an average professor would do. They care for and encourage their students to reach their full potential no matter what. They've given us so much support and their best interest is always us and our future careers and making sure that we learn something from every opportunity that we have and they're a blessing to work with because they teach us something new every single day. These two women have helped pave the way for many aspiring journalists like me so that we too one day can be as successful as them. In the Speech Arts Building, Alexis Molina, Fresno State Focus. Well, I know that without a doubt, Kim and Faith have taught me everything that I know about the news industry. I agree. But this, this news industry can be a little overwhelming, but thanks to Kim and Faith, I could certainly say we're all ready for the challenge ahead. Speaking of, they'd probably tell us right now that we need to get on to the next story. A couple of weeks ago, we showed you the reaction to Governor Newsom lifting, lifting the mask mandate in public schools. Now, Ryan Jones takes us back to Dos Palos Elementary to see how the latest changes are impacting students. On February 28th, California Governor Gavin Newsom announced that masking will no longer be required for public schools. Two weeks later, students are seeing their friends' faces in the classroom for the first time in two years. The way that we rolled it out initially, they were given plenty of time. They knew that it was coming. They were able to prepare and plan for it. I think that helped ease it. But there will always be that uneasy feeling that maybe it isn't safe. Number six on the spelling test is near. As in, it seems we are near the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. While some may be eager to remove the masks. Others are erring on the side of caution. Um, personally, I do like to keep my mask on um, just because um, there's still a lot of kids that are sick. Regardless if it's not COVID, there's not that much. There's a lot of illnesses out there, um, but just to keep myself safe and stuff. Teachers are already seeing improvement from students and have expressed that those that have fallen behind are making significant progress. Letters, sounds, vocabulary, they, they, can't, they can't see your mouth. They can't hear you. I can't hear them because in first grade, a lot of kids still come in a little shy and reserved. And so it was just very difficult. The mask debate may never cease, but most are just happy to have the choice to wear them or not. At Dos Palos Elementary, Ryan Jones, Fresno State Focus. Despite low vaccination rates for kids between the ages of 5 and 11, COVID cases have been decreasing since the beginning of the new year. The American dream is really expensive. Octavia Murillo shows us what some people are experiencing in the home buying process. Gabriela Murillo is on the search for a new home in the city of Bakersfield, but it is not going well. 
prices are really high right now. Um, there is low inventory and a lot of people are looking to buy. So it makes it a very competitive market. So why are prices reaching these levels? Fabian Torres is a realtor in the Central Valley who has seven years of experience working in the field and says low interest rates might be the cause. Well, I mean, with the whole COVID thing, um, you see a lot of uh, a lot of activity. I think I think it has to do with uh, the interest rates dropping, man. Josue Fernandez is also looking to become a homeowner, but like Mario, he is also struggling. Historically, low interest rates in conjunction with uh, high demand and buying pressure from the LA area to and the Bay Area, uh, and with uh, the high increase in uh, building supplies, has made it really hard to find reasonably priced homes. It seems low interest rates are really driving up the competition for new homes. We didn't expect for them to drop that much. I think they dropped about maybe like two points, and that brought a whole lot of people that couldn't buy before to be able to come into the market. It seems low interest rates are really driving competition up, making it hard for people to get their ideal home and causing a bidding war on a home they may really want. For Fresno State Focus, I'm Octavio Murillo. Filling your gas tank is also expensive, making a dent in some people's pockets with gas reaching six to seven dollars in some areas of California. Christina Ledesma has a story. All over the United States, it's hard to ignore the clear rise in the price of gas. Many people have noticed the usual price they pay to fill up their tank has doubled. Uh, before, I used to fill up the tank with uh, $30, $35, when it was like almost $3. Right now, I fill up a tank, you're paying like $60, $70 just for one tank that has 15 gallons. Compared to other states in the U.S., California has the highest prices. Some are wondering why this may be. We speak to Antonio Avalos, econ professor at Fresno State, to know why. Oh, well, one is that we don't, in California, we don't produce all the gasoline that we consume, so we need to bring, we need to truck gasoline from Texas and other states, so that increases the cost. And also taxes. Although the price of oil has seemed to gone down, the price may not go down as much as we think. We need to give the refineries time to get back on, uh, on their feet, to get back to their 100%. Lawmakers in California are trying to pass a $400 tax rebate to help with the high costs. Our goal is to get it done this spring, and we're going to be pushing really, really hard to make that happen. Lawmakers say you shouldn't see a refund just yet, but they are working on it. In Southeast Fresno, Christina Ledesma, Fresno State Focus. Just this afternoon, Governor Newsom released details on a plan to send $400 for each registered vehicle in the state to compensate for gas prices. The annual Peach Blossom Festival is finally back in person at Fresno State after being canceled in 2020 and online in 2021. Students will be able to perform and read poetry in front of a live audience, leaving those who are helping put it all together excited for what's in store. I I'm excited to see it all come together, you know, the day of and seeing everybody work together. Um, when we first started talking about Peach Blossom this year, it was considered to be uh, all virtual again, and that kind of made me sad. But everything worked out, and the festival will run as planned tomorrow and Thursday. Performances will be graded in their normal format on a scale from good to superior. So if you see a bunch of kids running around campus, just know they are there for a special public speaking experience. Preview day is coming up. This will be virtual. Prospective Bulldogs will have the opportunity to attend webinars and learn more about what our university has to offer. This year's preview day is April 2nd. Fresno State's Enology Society is hosting its Bud Break Bash on April 1st, the first since COVID. Tickets are $45 for Fresno State students, staff, and members. There will be an open bar, silent auction, prizes, desserts, and a live band, which means dancing. Our bud break is really important in the wine world. Um, it's the official start, I guess, of the growing season. So uh, bud break means that the, uh, like the flower starts to emerge from, from the vine. Madison says that as a result of climate change, budding has begun earlier in the season. Coming up on Fresno State Focus, we look at how people are spending Ag Week. That includes these calves, 
We'll tell you what they're doing in their little houses. Plus, more and more people are thrifting and shopping vintage. We find out why. And I'm Christina Ledesma, here to give you your weather update here next. At Fresno State, being bold means committing to something greater than yourself. It's learning by doing and nurturing leaders to advance our shared future. It's using research to create a better life for those around us and healing those who need us most. These are our stories because at Fresno State, bold begins here. Success. At Fresno State, it's no secret. It's discovering new ways to change our world. It's creating opportunities as diverse as our community itself. It's in the distinction of our graduates as they lead us into the future. Success is no secret at Fresno State. It's our mission. Hi, I'm Christina Ledesma with your Focus on Weather. As you can see behind me, it's been a quite a clear and sunny day here, but let's take a look at our national satellite. As you can see, we do have some action going on. If you take a look more on the east coast, we have some snow up in the Great Lakes area, and all this right here is going to be rain. You take a look on the other side in the west coast, there isn't much happening. It is quite dry, but let's take a closer look at California. Yep, it is pretty dry, so you could expect some sun and clear skies. Let's take a look at our highs today. We have highs of 88 all along Madera, Fresno, Hanford. If you're looking to escape the heat already, you can go to Shaver Lake with the high of 67. Looking at our lows, you could expect average temperatures around the nighttime with 50 degrees, except in Shaver and Stockton. Looking at our air quality, it is moderate, but it is nothing that you should be too concerned about. And then here's our seven day forecast. As you can see, there is a big jump from Wednesday, Thursday with 90 degrees with a chance of rain on Monday. So don't put away your sweaters and jackets just yet. That is your weather update here with Christina Ledesma. Back to you, Carl. Thanks, Christina. This week is National Ag Week. It's a time to celebrate the agricultural industry and all of its achievements. Tyler Van Dyke is out in the Fresno State Farm with more. Not everyone understands right the significance now. the agriculture industry has on our lives. Most people don't know where they get their food from or about all the different services that are provided by agriculture, as explained by Emily Ray. So National Ag Week is to celebrate all the farmers and everything that are in our area because most people today don't even know where their food came from, don't even know how to plant a plant don't even know what water rights are. Farmers in the ag industry are some of the hardest workers you will ever find, usually working nonstop throughout the year. Farmers deserve to be recognized for the hours they put in and the hard jobs that they do for us. That is what National Ag Week is all about. National Ag Week is to appreciate all the people that spend literally 365 days a year. They're constantly working. They never stop. They're always going and it's to celebrate them in a way where they need to be celebrated. Our students at Fresno State have amazing opportunities through clubs and internships, which help them find a career after they graduate. Being an ag student at Fresno State is the place to be because you can be involved in clubs that get you really connected into the industry here. Um, I'm a part of the ag business club right now, and that's a great way for me to learn through internships. National Ag Week is a big deal for Aggies, not only in the Valley, but nationwide as well. And they deserve to be recognized and appreciated for all they do for us on a daily basis. Now? Oh. Ag workers and farmers across the Central Valley and nationwide deserve to be recognized and appreciated during this National Ag Week. From Fresno State Ag Farm, Tyler Van Dyke, Fresno State Focus, Back to you guys. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy has a new campaign office in Clovis. This past weekend, I met him there to find out what he thinks about the Clovis way of life.
Clovis supporters rounded up and gathered for the grand opening of House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy's new campaign office Saturday. McCarthy's campaign treated attendees to free food, shirts, lawn signs, and more. Saturday, this is, this is beyond what I thought would be there. There's a lot of enthusiasm. I wanted to make sure that they had a place that they can always go to be able to help on the campaign, a place that they can give their voice to me as well. Kevin McCarthy's Clovis campaign office is located in the heart of Old Town Clovis, which is right across from the Clovis garage. McCarthy represents the 23rd California Congressional District. He is running for the remap 20th district, which includes Clovis, this November. This is the first time he was able to talk to voters in Clovis. A lot of this area is new to me. I'm up listening to the constituents, talking about their concerns, looking at ways that I can earn their vote and their support. Republicans are hoping to regain the majority in Congress this election day. That includes John Girardi, the executive director of Right to Life, Central California. And it's kind of exciting that, um, you know, if Republicans take the House in 2022, which a lot of people expect they will, um, that Mr. McCarthy might be Speaker of the House. So it'd be pretty cool for the Speaker of the House to represent Clovis. The Clovis campaign office will remain open up to Election Day this November. They are looking for volunteers. For you to know, I'm going to be here to listen. We may not always agree, but I want to be able to listen to your concerns. When asked about California's high gas prices, McCarthy said America needs to be energy independent and says the, the recent proposed $400 tax rebate will not solve the problem. Vintage clothing is a growing business. It is saving the planet, saving people money, and supporting small business owners all at the same time. Throughout the last decade, the vintage market is continuing to grow and make a comeback. There is a high demand for vintage clothing as fashion trends continue to recycle over time. Many thrift and vintage businesses have opportunities where you can earn money for bringing in your used clothing. This is known as consignment. When we do sell an item, it goes onto that person's account and they receive 40% of what we actually sell it at. The growing business of thrifted and vintage clothing stems from trends of the past that have now become trends of the present. It's also a response to fast fashion and the lack of sustainability in that industry. For a lot of people that collect vintage, they look at it as more than a hobby but rather an investment and something that's going to hold its value over the next couple of years. Finding unique clothing pieces in a thrift store is cheaper and can save you a lot of money. You could also earn a profit from reselling those items on websites like Depop. Most of the time I'll buy them for $50, $100 and they'll be worth like even more. Sometimes I go to a, a vintage store or a thrift store and they'll be $3 and I look online and they'll like be $200. Local vintage business owners are passionate about what they do and take pride in getting to provide vintage clothing to the community. Being able to see people happy and liking what we style them in, um, it's, it's fun. It's fun because we get to show them actual true vintage versus what you see in a magazine or you see in Google. The demand for vintage continues to grow in our society today and doesn't appear to be going anywhere anytime soon. For anyone in Fresno looking to shop thrift or vintage, the Tower District has so many options and is a great place to start. Today is National Puppy Day. It's a day to recognize the joy and love puppies bring to our lives. Adrian Robbins has more on how you can get your very own puppy. This is a day to celebrate those cute little pets that will become your best friends. A great way to get your new puppy is to adopt one from a shelter. Okay, so between Brenda and I, since December 2019, it's been more than 500. And places like these, where you can come in, adopt a puppy or another dog and change not just your life, but that little dog's life too. Because I, know, I noticed here in the Central Valley, we had a need. There were so many stray animals running around. It's good to know if your new little puppy gets lost, people are here to help you find them again. Reuniting them, reuniting animals with their owners is Probably my most favorite thing. The second to that is getting them adopted into to homes, the ones that don't have owners. Kids have big responsibilities too because they need to help clean up after them. And very hard. You have to clean his poop every single day. At least, she, at least I am nine. I don't have to feed him. Water the dog. 
But he is so cute. Aren't you cute, Lucky? He said yes. Puppies are hard work, but they bring so much love and happiness to the family. So today on National Puppy Day, maybe you can find your new puppy. In Parlier, Adrian Robbins, Fresno State Focus. Just in case you're more of a cat person, National Kitten Day is July 10th. Coming up in sports, Alexis Molina gives us a look into Fresno State spring football. Coach Tedford talks about what it's like to be back with Fresno. Plus, a story that will be sure to make you hungry. We are one Fresno State, a university that celebrates the bold excellence of our students. Our Bulldogs become your child's teacher, your family's health care provider, your leader, your problem solver, your hero. A degree from Fresno State opens minds and opens doors. This is where bold begins. Here in the valley, our colors are blue and our waves are red. Bulldog born and bulldog bred. Generations linked forever by traditions that have stood the test of time. Inside our stadiums, we are one. This is our valley. And this year, we're doing it for you. Welcome back. I'm Alexis Molina with your Focus on Sports. All the Madness of March continues this weekend with the Sweet 16. Cinderella teams, which are a lot of fan favorites, were in full effect. Michigan and Iowa State both pulled off upsets and moved on. Defending national champions and number one seed Baylor fell to North Carolina. But the biggest surprise of all is 15th seed St. Peter's making it to the Sweet 16 after beating second seed Kentucky. The Fresno State football team is back in practice. The Bulldogs have 14 spring practices and return several stars along with assistant coaches. There is also coach Jeff Tedford who is back after two years away for health related concerns. Coach Tedford is ready for the challenge once again. I'm blessed and really fortunate to be here um, with this team and and working for my alma mater. Um, so appreciative of the opportunity to be around these guys, the players, the coaching staff. Um, it's awesome. The Bulldogs are led by returning all Mountain West quarterback, Jake Hayner, running back, Jordan Mims, wide receiver, Jalen Cropper, and defensive end, David Perales. They all come back from a 10 win season in 2021. Now to baseball. After playing 19 innings in a doubleheader against Nevada on Sunday, the Diamond Dogs wrapped up their home stand against Long Beach State. We take you to Pete Biden Field. The Dirtbags, yes, that's their name, scored eight runs in the first inning. Trying to answer, Fresno State had the bases loaded with one out. A double play ended the threat. Long Beach State tacked on six more runs in the second for a 14-0 lead. Despite striking out 17 batters and notching 16 hits, the Diamond Dogs lost 19-7. Formula One is back after last year's exciting season where the championship came down to the last lap of the last race. The season kicked off with a bang with Team Ferrari taking home first and second. Charles Leclerc took first, Carlos Sainz came in second. This ended Ferrari's 45 race winless streak. Next weekend is the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And that's your focus on sports. Apple just dropped its newest and latest update, the iOS 15.4. There are over a hundred new emojis. A few new ones are the melting face and the nest with eggs. One emoji that stood out and has people talking is the new pregnant man emoji. There's more inclusivity with new different skin tones. If you like using emojis while texting, you are going to love this new update. But there's still no Superman emoji. I guess we'll just have to settle for the movies. The Riddler is asking for you. Earlier this month, the Batman debuted in theaters and earned the highest domestic opening of 2022 so far. 
In February, Spider-Man No Way Home swung onto the big screen and is now the third highest grossed film all time domestically. According to BoxOfficeMojo.com, seven of the top ten films are based on the hero genre. Although this is a positive when it comes to revenue, just what is it about these films that draw so many people? Charles Hyman says that for him, his favorite hero, Batman, is more than just a hero. It kind of kind of relates to some people in a way. Um, for me, because he's about justice, like I said, and and I'm law enforcement, so I feel like I'm for justice as well. He takes justice in his own hands. Not only do these films draw crowds in theaters, but also from the comfort of home. Streaming sites like HBO Max dedicate their own categories to the hero genre because there are so many choices. Some people, like Jayla Ramirez, would rather stream another type of movie. I'm just not really into superhero movies, so I feel like there should be more like romance or comedy movies instead of movies about superheroes that always have the same endings in them. Cameron Ramirez nearly felt the same way as her younger sister. However, thanks to her boyfriend, she's had a different outlook on the films. And I think that's kind of what made me think, like, you know, oh, these are kind of cool. Before, I never really had a preference on watching this or that. But I feel like now, ever since he started watching them with me, I think they're way more interesting than I thought before. More superhero films are on the way. Morbius and Doctor Strange hit theaters in April and May. Okay, we've talked about puppies, cool emojis, even movies. But none of those things can beat chips and dip. It's National Chip and Dip Day. Feel free to dig into a bag of chips and a bowl of salsa. Look at that queso. Wow, it looks so good. Personally, I'll take the spinach and artichoke dip. I don't know about that, and he said, personally, I'm a simple man with simple taste. Give me the green onion dip, and I'll be perfectly just fine. Well, I have to disagree with you, Carl. <laughs> One more thing you need to know. If you show your student ID at Bulldog Bowl, you'll get two free games and an hour of billiards until April 1st. Next week on Fredo State Focus, we'll talk about the impact that the drought is having on California. Also, we'll find out how the city is working to make sure the next time you go to the Fashion Fair Mall, you'll be safe. Finally, we will give you a sneak peek into spring football practice. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.